Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Today is Saturday, September 23rd, and this is my weekly HVAC vlog brought to you by my friends at New Calgon. This week started off really rough for me on a personal level. On Sunday last week, my beloved cat passed away. And even though it wasn't a surprise, she was 18 years old, so we'd been kind of expecting it. When it happened, it really broke my heart. I mean, I had her since she was this tiny little kitten. She was eight weeks old when I got her. So we've been through a lot together over the years. So that's really, really sad. I probably shouldn't have gone to work on Monday. I was very emotional. But luckily we were on a rooftop all day and we didn't have to see many people. We're in the freezing cold wind. We were looking at a Samsung VRF system at a school. Actually, they've got two VRF systems there. Actually, they've got a whole lot of equipment on that roof. Pretty big stuff. Wow, I don't think I've seen anything this big before. That's massive. Hmm. Super cool. But we were there for the Samsung VRF. Now, one company installed it and a different company is maintaining it. And now they've called us to troubleshoot it. So on the first level, they weren't getting any heating or cooling. And then when the maintenance company took a look at it, they were like, there's this communication error that we just can't figure out. We don't know what the hell is going on here. So we ended up on the roof, we ended up calling technical support because there's like seven or eight different control boards, PCBs on this unit. And the troubleshooting guide is like, if this board is getting power, replace this board. And if this board is getting power, replace these two boards. So anyway, so we finally traced the fault, we believe, to inverter board number one. So we're going to, we've ordered that, we're going to replace that guy. Hopefully that solves our problem, our communication problem. But when we're on the phone with technical support, they were like, since you've got a primary and a sub unit, there's two of them, and the communication between them is what's causing the issue, you can take the sub unit out of, out of commission. Not really, you're just kind of shutting it down. And you can keep the primary unit running by doing this little thing. So tricky too, because we did the thing, and then it seemed like the system was cycling. It, was, it seemed like it was trying to map all of the indoor units and it would just go through the cycle. It would just keep counting up and then restart and keep counting up and then restart and keep counting up. And because we're not super familiar with Samsung VRFs, we actually called customer support or technical support back and we were like, this thing is just cycling through its like mapping. And they're like, no, that's normal operation. So, if you work on Samsung VRFs, <laughs> no more operation cycles through that little counter. Anyway, Tuesday was an office day for me. Actually, my brother had a very small procedure at the hospital done on Tuesday, so my dad basically gave me the day off to sort out my emotions. <laughs> so I stayed home, I got some bookkeeping done and some admin stuff on my computer. I did a little bit of spring cleaning in my house. It was very th therapeutic. 
Um, actually, I had a comment on one of my videos before about admin and bookkeeping stuff, and they were like, you should include that in your vlog. And I'd never really considered that before, but I think that's kind of a cool idea. I will do that. This week, however, was just not the week for that. I was just not in the mood or in the mindset for, for doing that. And that's the, the sucky thing about grief. Whenever you're grieving, the world just keeps going. Nothing slows down or stops just because you're sad. Vlogs still need to be made, but wasn't totally into it this week. So on Wednesday, we were called to a catering truck. So we've done a bit of work on this guy's catering trucks before, but he called us up and he's like, hey, I just got this new truck, new to me, it's second hand. It's sitting at my electrician's house. Can you go and just check out the refrigeration equipment? Mm -hmm. So we get on this, this truck and when we first look at the refrigeration equipment, just looking at it, we we're just like, what the hell happened here? It's like rusting, disintegrating, falling apart. Alrighty then. There's these two extra fans on the top that are just kind of hung there with like, um, what do you call that stuff? All round? They're just hung there. Anyway, those two fans don't work and they're not part of the system. They're just like an extra cooling thing. Anyway, I kind of wish we could just cut them out because they were in our way. So we took a look at the equipment on this on this um, truck, first of all, I'll say that if you ever need to pull the units out of the places where they are, it's impossible because they have diamond plated them in. And we see this all the time. We see this where they've like permanently installed these units and sometimes we have to pull them out to work on them. Anyway, so there were three coolers on this truck. The one cooler was totally fine. It started up right away. <laughs> and cooled down to a decent temperature. So that was okay. The second unit, the fan needed a little bit of a jolt to get going, but it was working as well. And then the third unit was more of a like a open up for, um, cooler. It had three doors, and that one, its evaporator fan and its condenser fan motor were both dead. Not bad. This is one. Blade is stuck. So luckily we had the fan motors with us in our truck. We carry maybe nine or ten different kinds of motors 
and luckily we had two that we needed. However, accessing these two motors was almost impossible. Well, it wasn't impossible because I did it. But I, my arm was all cut up. I had to pretty much go in blindly. The evaporator coil sits on a box, like it's a cased coil on, a, on top of the cooler. And in order to get into it, basically, you gotta take the lid off. But it's got four screws in each corner. Um, the first, the, the corners right on the end were totally fine. But the screws were literally about the size of the space, the clearance space we had. So I used this little ratcheting like screwdriver thing just to get the screw out until it was loose enough for me to take out with my fingers because there was no space. It was ridiculous. Then once we had the lid off, to get to the fan motor, you had to go in blindly. You just had to like put your, your hand in there and feel around. <laughs> I ended up using my phone. I turned it to selfie mode and was like trying to face it in a way that I could kind of see it because I had to line up the screw holes after I changed the motor. Not on the end of it. On your side, yeah. I mean, I can't even, I can't even see it. I can only get to it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, there was a bit of swearing, um, yeah. <laughs> and then the condenser fan motor was right beside it. Uh, that was also so tricky. I had to use so many different kinds of tools just to get the motor free. Okay, we got those stupid ass screws out, but now this pipe won't let me take this out. Oh, for goodness sake. This fan was somehow worse than the other one. Anyway, we got her done and I feel pretty proud about it. Because we, at the beginning, we were like, I don't think this is happening unless they make some like pretty big changes here. But we persevered, we got through. There is a bunch of rusty screws coming through the ceiling that I was really careful of. It's gonna scrape my arm on them. And I got a tiny, I can't, don't know if you can see it, I got a tiny little dot here where one of the screws actually got me. And now I'm like, am I gonna die from tetanus? After we were finished with the catering truck, the electrician actually came down, he gave us power, he told us that he'd rewired a bunch of stuff and he put more diamond plating on the outside and it's looking pretty good. Um, and he was a pretty friendly guy, so at the end he was telling us that he does metal forging at his house. He's got this little studio up in his, in his um, garden and he does metal forging. 
And he's like, do you guys want to come and see? Yeah. So he took us up to his little studio there and he gave us a little, little tour and he tells us that he does private uh, lessons there. So you go and you learn how to make a knife. He's got a little fire kiln and a hydraulic press and he's got all the toys there. And so he will take on little classes and you can make a custom knife and you can take it home with you, which is just the coolest thing. Uh, because I find it's a bolder design on it and yeah. it just makes it look nicer. All right. So, so it's basically a, a heat repeat. So I do a lot of hammering, but I also have a 2010 hydraulic press, right, which is necessary. And that is one thing I just love about this trade is you get exposed to so many different cool things that you never would have if you're sitting behind a desk. Thursday was so awesome. Thursday was the Modern Hydronic Summit here in Coquitlam in Vancouver. device that produces warm water. We can use very low temperatures, as, as Robert was pointing out. Uh, very high distribution efficiency. How many have heard that term, distribution efficiency? Anybody? We've been writing about it a little bit. It's a really simple... And part of that event was the HPAC magazine, Educational Boiler Build. which basically we had three tables outside of the conference where we built a boiler board. <laughs> now, I don't do any hydronics at all. I do HVAC, I do refrigeration, I don't touch water stuff, like hydronic stuff. So this was my second experience with it. I was invited to last year's event, so this year, we did the same thing. And you guys, it is so impressive to see these guys work. It is so impressive. We start off with blank boards and boxes of supplies and materials. You guys are plumbing away. Just plumbing. All right. And at the end of the day, we've got these three beautiful, complicated boards. And I was chatting with the guys a lot there. It was like, this is kind of like a big puzzle. And they're like, yeah, this is adult Lego. It's so cool. You got to plan it out and you got to strategize because things have to be on different levels and they have to pass each other. And the thing at the end of the day is just so beautiful. I have such a big appreciation for what they do. We hit up these flow setters. These guys? We had a couple of guys come in from New Jersey. We had one from Texas, a couple of from Toronto. All these influences they came, and so the idea is for us to educate people on these hydronic systems, on all these little parts and accessories that are installed. They. The crowd there was allowed to watch us, they asked questions, we had giveaways. It was such a cool, fun thing to do. And I just, I, my spirit, considering the week that I had at the beginning of the week, my spirit has just been reinvigorated and it's, it's just so cool to be part of it. My friends at Infra Air HVAC, they had this t-shirt made for me, oh my goodness, in support of Women in HVAC Art Canada. It is the coolest thing. I've spoken about the A-Team here before, and this is the new shirt. It's the A-Team. And you guys, that is me! I'm on a t-shirt! How cool is that? So they were giving away a few of these t-shirts. They still have a few more to give away, so maybe I can hook you up with one. 
And then we also got this wicked shirt, part of the event. So that's the uh, the Modern Hydronic Summit 2023. And on the back is all of the sponsoring companies. It was put on by H <clears throat> HPAC Magazine and by Impetus Media. Uh, there is a whole bunch of sponsors. Super cool. And at the very, very bottom is a few of our logos and you'll notice me there too. So that was a very, very fun event. Um, learned a lot, had a lot of fun. Um, super awesome. Friday was a fairly easy day for me too because my dad, actually my parents, my mom and dad are going on a holiday vacation next week. They leave on Saturday today. So my dad kind of wanted to take an easy day. So I went over to the pub where I change filters every month. Got that changed. I also checked in on their controllers that we changed a couple weeks ago just to make sure that they were obviously working, but also that the ice started to melt and it has. It's a bit of a slow thing. There's still a bit of ice on that TXV and on the coil. but I think it will t um, eventually completely go away. And then we can adjust the defrost time back to four hour intervals instead of six hour intervals. Sorry, six back to six hour intervals instead of four hour intervals. We're doing them more frequently now so that we can try and get rid of that ice, which is cool because now I, I've checked on the condensate pumps as well. Now I know that digital controller is working like defrost wise properly, remember? Remember these uh, condensate pumps from a couple weeks ago? They're now nice and wet. They were bone dry before. And look at all this beautiful condensate. That's, that's a good amount. Yes, it's working. Let's see where the other one is buried. Oh my goodness, it's back there somewhere. Anyway. Oh, there she is. I'm gonna check to make sure that all the pipes are still properly in. And I also checked on the, um, the under-counter coolers at the pub. Also, while I'm here, I'm gonna check for some condenser coil blankets. On this guy, and that guy. Oh, there should not be a bag there covering that. Okay, that's all I've got for you this week, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the HVAC Diaries HVAC Vlog. Can you believe I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers? <laughs> Thank you guys, I'm just blown away by that. That is super cool. I know I spend a lot of my time on Instagram, um, so having that kind of following here on, on YouTube is just 
mind blowing. It's pretty, pretty exciting and pretty cool. So thank you, thank you, and thank you to New Calgon for their continued support. See you next week. Have a good one. We call that contractor love when the one foot's lifting up. Not <laughs> love. Contractor hatred for unaccessible bolts. Got one. Now you're done.